Welcome to the NHL 94 podcast, part of the CBP Media Network. This podcast is dedicated to the greatest game ever developed, where I will talk about the development of the game, tournaments and matches, our stories about NHL 94, the people that make up the NHL 94 community, the games won, lost, and the chirps that need to be heard around the world. Welcome 16-Bit Hockey fans to yet another edition of the NHL 94 podcast. I'm Len the Legend. And today, well, it's more for folks out there who still think they're the shit in NHL 94. <laughs> and, you know, you could put your reputation on the line. You could go head-to-head with competition, real-life competition. These are great players in both the Genesis and SNES side of things for the upcoming King of 94 tournament in Toronto. But on that topic, I am talking once again to Daryl, a.k.a. Halifax, uh, one of the main wheels behind the King of 94 tournament. Uh, Daryl, how are you, buddy? Good. Thanks for having me back, Lynn. I love your podcasts and all the uh, interviews you've done. So happy to jump on. I guess this will be a shorter one, but uh, still cool. We'll, we still got uh, some things to talk about. So I do appreciate you taking the time to come on to talk about because it's King of 94 season. This tournament is taking place next month. But before I talk, I want to hear you talk about it. What is the King of 94 tournament? Yeah, it's a tournament that started, oh gosh, almost nine years ago now by a guy named Mikey McBrien. Uh, And uh, I won't go into too heavy details because you can actually get a lot of the information on our King of 94 website. Uh, But he had started it uh, in 2015. He was doing a documentary on the uh, video game NHL 94. And this tournament that he created was sort of the culmination of trying to find who's the best in the world at the video game. And so since then, he, he, I helped him out kind of since day one, <clears throat> both myself and another guy named Michael Capel, who goes by Spazoma. And after, I think, the third one, he just kind of, Mikey just sort of handed off the gears and said, hey, you and you and uh, Smoz can, can take it over. So since then, we've been running it, and it's, it's um, the best players. Well, we like to say from all over the world, but essentially they're from Canada and and the U.S. We haven't had any outside players yet, uh, other than those two countries attend. Um, but the tournaments are held on uh, two separate tournaments on a Super Nintendo and one on Sega Genesis. And it's play, taking place Toronto on the twenty eighth and sorry, tw- yeah, twenty eighth, twenty ninth this year uh, yeah. of September. That's and right. uh, CRT only, right? This is the only thing you're going to be using for the tournament. Is no LCDs? Yeah. Uh, we try to have uh, as many CRTs as possible. Uh, they do have a couple of LCD screens there, which we have um, these, uh, we got them, it's called like a retro trio console. It's a, you know, sort of a revised uh, system that allows you to play Super Nintendo and Sega on the same one. So it has an HDMI cable. So that one, we, we have used it last year just for a couple of them. Ideally, I don't want to do that, but um, we had to do that because we needed, we didn't have enough TVs. So, <laughs> but ideally, yes, all CRTs, which we mostly had last year. How many CRTs could you hold at one time? A couple in each shoulder, maybe uh, somewhere oh, else. You, know, you must have some record of holding I, on to these CRTs. I'm out of, I'm out of shape. I, <laughs> I nearly died last weekend trying to, or last time, just trying to carry TVs and systems up and down the stairs. So there was a, there was a lot. That place doesn't have an elevator, unfortunately. So we were doing a lot of running up and running up and down the stairs but uh, we got it done so uh and the, and the the venue is called free play toronto uh it's a it's a nice place in the sort of in the core of toronto it's an arcade bar it's it's an awesome awesome venue um it was the first time we had it there last year and all of the guys loved it i mean when they had a break or when they were eliminated from the tournament uh basically they just jumped on the arcade machines and started playing all their old favorites so so that part of it was really cool I think we had uh, somewhere around 14 to 16 setups. Um, most of them got used. There was a couple of them that we probably didn't end up using. So I sort of plan to keep it at 14 this year because um, it is a little crammed. A little, uh, it was a little crammed last year. So we're trying to create more space for, for the players this year. I mean, it wasn't bad, but um, yeah, a little tight, but the venue is is awesome. 
in terms of spectators, then the people that are not participating, are they able to show up or are they going to be kind of shunned away because there's not much space? No, they can. Um, they can they can come and watch. Now, the venue itself charges its own, um, I don't know what you would call it. I don't know if entry fee is the right word. Um, um, but anyways, I think it's like $10, 5 or 10 bucks. Uh, so you're basically a patron. So you can go in and play whatever games or you can just come up and watch type of thing. They're very cool. And as of today, we're recording on Sunday, uh, is it August 4th, around 8 p.m. Genesis mm-hmm. already sold out. Yes. I was shocked at how fast it went. Uh, we have never, I mean, last year, I think it was capped at 35 players. And uh, it took about, I would say, about two weeks, probably, maybe a little bit longer for Sega to sell out. Uh, this time it was gone in, in three days. I just couldn't believe it that it went so fast. And in, I would love to have more people in there. It's just, there's just not enough space. There's just not enough time to, mm-hmm. to, to do all of those things. So uh, that's why we have to cap the numbers. Um, but for the most part over the years, it's ranged between that 30 to, to, to 45. The first year was the only time we ever had way more than that. And uh, that was when Mikey was organizing. And I think we had, it was, uh, well, it was 64 sites. So, but um, that was at downtown Toronto. Um, at the uh, Real Sports Bar, just outside of the uh, where the Leafs play, I don't know what the place is called now, but Rogers Center, maybe I don't know. No, the, anyway, the played at the ACC before. I, I forget what it is. Yeah, it, was, yeah, it is Rogers yeah, Center now. Yeah, yeah right. it was it used to be the ACC. I just couldn't remember what or, it was called now. Or whatever it is now. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so I, that was a much bigger. We had a lot, at least a little bit more room there and a lot more time uh, to to get things done. And we started at eight o'clock that day. That one that one went the whole day, but. Uh, yeah. So anyways, that's where we're at uh, now. And um, you know what? Last year when we did it, we had 35 guys uh, and the goal was to finish by seven o'clock. And we finished uh, both days because um, we have Sega on one day and, and Super Nintendo on the other day. We finished both days within time, which was great. And a lot of people actually really liked that. That was the that was the feedback that I've gotten from past years because I always send out a survey afterwards and they like the sort of seven hour range maximum of, of a tournament. They don't really want to be there uh, typically longer than that. So that was our, our goal. You do it well from what I gather. And you're right. Like, let's be honest, setting this up, administering it, making sure everything runs smoothly is very difficult. It's challenging. A lot of moving parts. So kudos to you guys for actually doing it. And it's it even right. harder when you don't live there. <laughs> right. It's, that's yeah. another challenge you have to deal with. Hundred yeah. percent. So for those that are watching, I live in Saskatoon, which is a long way from uh, long way from Toronto. And the other guy that runs with me, he lives in Ottawa. So it's not like we can just hop over to the venue and try and figure things out and, and logistics. So this year when we're there, I basically I'll be there on the Friday night trying to see, you know. Um, you know what furniture we can move around just to make it more accessible for players so that that, um, things go a lot smoother and we're always thinking about ways to make it better and just have you know have a fun time and a comfortable time in terms of the sega side being sold out that's fine that's the manual goalie the auto goalie still there are still available spots spots for that right that's right yeah the auto goalie is something that we had brought back uh we, we introduced it about five years ago i think i had maybe seven players uh that had turned out for that one and we thought that we would bring it back just to more so try and attract people that like the game that are you know their skill level may not be very good or they or they really never use manual goalie and there's actually a lot of i did a poll of of how uh many people used manual goalie versus not and i think it was about 60 65 percent that did not use manual goalie growing up so they just played with the goalie and how it is and that actually kind of surprised me a little bit i thought okay well there's it seems like there are people that love this game so we just want more people to to come people that like the game and not feel like intimidated uh that they can't come and enjoy themselves so i try and we have a try and set in a way so that you know the best players are playing against the best players and you know the less skilled ones they're going to play against each other too makes it more fun when nobody wants to get blown out every game all right, I agree with it, and I'm one of those people. I still play online, and I try to use it says manual goalie, but that's why I choose the Canadians. Or I, I draft for a I let the guy play. I don't want to, you know, I'm terrible with manual goalie, so I'm going to let one of the better AI do it, and then you know I could just sit back and pretend to be good. 
<laughs> that's the reality. I'm not very good. I agree. Montreal is a team that you can do that with. Um, just relying on why. I mean, Super Nintendo version, I don't think the goalies really matter as much. I would say far less than Sega. Uh, but Sega, you know, using Wah, uh, he'll always get you the save when you didn't think that you were going to get the save. And I don't know how he does it, but makes a difference. That one goal. One shot, you know, makes a difference in the game. So I agree with you there. He is the man. I'm curious yourself. Are you going to be participating in both the SNES and the Genesis side? Yeah, I I organize it. Well, we both organize it, but you know, we travel a long way, and uh, I love both games. So I just I can't see myself not playing in the tournament. I I do everything I can to to make sure that uh, that I can squeeze myself in and and play and get my butt kicked in Sega and I'd say for Nintendo I'm I'm not too bad at that. So a little little bit better at that one compared to everybody else. So and the SNES side, that's probably gonna sell out too within the next couple of weeks, right? Is that your prediction? Uh I don't know yet. I know that there's a few guys that were that came last year that aren't able to make it this year. And I've I've reached out to just some guys that have attended before and have kind of got that response that they just can't make it. So mm-hmm. um, I'm not 100% sure that we will reach 40 on that. We may, we might, we might not. There's still lots of time, but um, I guess we'll find out. So uh, there's right now there's about 17 spots left. I know for sure there's at least five more guys that just haven't signed up yet that will. But after that, then I don't know. So And there's an auto goalie too for the SNES side as yeah. well? Yeah. That's right. Yeah. So we actually got our first sign up today. So we have one. <laughs> <laughs> so he may have a chance to win if nobody else signs up. He's going to be the, the winner. He can walk in the dirty. I'll just hand him the trophy. Here you go. <laughs> <laughs> Trophies. There's going to be so people are going to be able to, to get something if they if they do really well, right? That's right. Yeah. We so the round robin for the king bracket. And just so if you're watching and maybe this is new to you. Um after the round robin, we split it up actually into three tiers. So we have a king of 94 bracket, which is your top level players. Uh, the guys that uh, um, basically win five or six games of their six game round robin essentially will make it into that bracket. Those guys winning between three and four um, will go into our mid range. Uh, and uh, sorry, my phone alarm, what's going on there? I hear <laughs> we'll, go, it. <laughs> we'll go into our mid range. Uh, which we call the Duke of 94. So that's our mid-tier level. Uh, and that also has a trophy. Sorry for pausing this right here, but there is a correction I just wanted to make note of. Daryl reached out to me afterwards and wanted this on record. So he's going to say that to enter the puke, you're going to need between zero and one wins. But that's not true. You're going to need zero and two wins within a round robin. So that is the correct number of wins between zero and two that will get you into the puke not what Daryl says, zero to one. And I just want to thank Daryl for coming back to me afterwards to correct this. So note this moving forward when Daryl mentions the puke of 94. Yeah, and then the guys that uh, have that uh, either one win or no wins, uh, they go into the bottom. We call that our puke of 94, which uh, I <laughs> managed to win that last year in the Super Nintendo one. Um, so ah. it's the it's the bottom level, uh, guys. Um but anyways, that was um, inspired. We didn't know what to call it, and we were just calling it the Puke Tournament. And then someone just said, well, why don't you just call it the Puke of 94? And I was like, oh, that's of course. That just makes sense. So we uh, we have a little trophy on it um, from Valerie Zella Puking. So there oh, sorry, a, yeah, Puke. Yeah. <laughs> there, there's a, there used to be a guy that played. He doesn't play in a line anymore, and he always called him Puke. And I yeah. always thought that was kind of funny. And I was like, that's who we need to have on the trophy. So when you get if you win the puke in ninety four, that's that's when you get on the trophy. So very cool. So yeah. in in terms of what you have to bring uh, with you, your own joystick, anything else that you recommend? No, that's it. Lunch? I mean, we no. Uh, I mean, there's there's it, it's a bar, so it'll be open. They have uh, they've got a pretty good menu of food. I tried. To, I don't know what they have interesting names. I think I had the King Koopa hamburger or something like that <laughs> i got the shirts right here <laughs> oh yeah there you go and it was <laughs> I got the- and it was delicious i'll say that it was it was really good 
and lots of different uh, different drinks and those kinds of things. So if people want to want to do that sort of thing. So uh, there's no shortage of food um, and and drinks available there, and it's it's open the entire time. I have to ask. I I, I didn't want to, but I, I'm gonna have to. Are do you think there's any sandbaggers out there that could try to lose their round robin to just make sure they get into the Duke or the puke? And then because they sandbagged, right, they're gonna have a good chance of winning that. That's you know that is a, a great question, uh, and I'll say this: I don't think it's ever happened. I like when guys go there; they play to win, and yeah. I I haven't run into a situation where I thought, like as you say, because somebody could, somebody could sandbag it. You know, if they're if they're um, saying they're in their last game and they're one and four, and they could they win their last one and move up to the Duke or or, or lose it and go down to the bottom one. They may choose to do that. I, I don't know. I don't think it's happened. Um, but um, because really, I mean, in the end, there is there is really not much difference. Uh, the prizes are a little bit nicer in, in the Duke. Uh, well, I can't remember what we did last year, but I usually try to make the Duke prizes just a little bit better than the ones that are in the bottom one. But everybody gets a trophy. The winner gets a prize. Uh, the second place winner will also get a prize in both of those tournaments. The king is all cash. So. Uh, I think last year we gave 750. We gave three top three prizes. It went 750, 500, and 250. So I anticipate it will probably be the same this year, uh, based on numbers. So, and, those and then we give, do- yeah, and then we give outdoor prizes too. So that's uh, we do a draw. We do that beforehand. We did, um, <clears throat> last year uh, we stream it online, so everybody has a chance. We figure out what we have for door prizes. Uh, it just makes the I try to reduce the amount of time on the day of doing other stuff because we don't have a lot of time. So uh, we do the door prizes in advance for that. What's your predictions for this year? For anything? I'm curious if you're going to give any uh, bold predictions. Well, uh, AJ, he's won it four times. Uh, no one's really come close yet. Other than Raph, uh, has has won it twice. But like last time, uh, AJ walked through with only one loss, and that was in the final. And I just think, uh, and the way I see he's playing online right now, it's it's going to be tough, I think, for for anyone else to take him down. So uh, I wouldn't be surprised if he won it again. There is, I mean, there's a few guys that could pull off an upset, but they really, it's kind of one of those things that everything needs to kind of go your way um, against them. So. Because uh, you can take luck luck out of the equation, <laughs> he, he seems to always compensate when people get lucky. So um, my that's I that's my prediction of who's going to win second. Now Super Nintendo is it's always a toss up. We've had four different champions the last four times, I believe. So um, it, it, you know who who knows who's going to win that one. But I would say probably. Uh, of those guys that have won it the last few times, uh, it would be one of them. I think Coke 45 is the only one that hasn't won a King of 94. He would be another one that I think is probably could be due to win one. So, but there's the professor, there's Bob Kadelsky, there's Anatar, there's uh, uh, Dangler who's been Dangler's been in the final the last three times. He's actually won it and then lost the last two. So he's definitely a good bet to, to get at least top three again, you know, so, but the rest of the field, it's pretty tough for, for guys to make it in. Um, even guys like Raph and AJ are really good at super Nintendo and they're, mm-hmm. they're, they're very, very close to that other group. Very close. So possible that one of them could also sneak into the final as well. So, so, which is amazing. I think when you can be good at super Nintendo and at Sega and Raph and, um, and AJ, two of the best. So I don't know. I can't think of anybody else that's really close to them on both systems combined. So, what about yourself? Uh, well, <laughs> like I said, I think, I, I think I'm an okay Super Nintendo player. Yeah. Uh, although I guess last time I did drop down to the bottom group, that was the first time that ever happened to me. But, but um, um, I don't think I'm good enough to make the king anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I think the last time I made the King bracket was like three or four tournaments ago. So uh, I believe now that uh, I think my time has passed. So I'm either going to be in a Duke bracket or 
or maybe even the bottom one this year. First for Super Nintendo. Sega, I 100% know I will be in the bottom group. That is my well, question. I guess it really depends how many people sign up too, right? Is this going to dictate how many people get it? Or... Oh, I can tell you this. I've already made the groups, and I'm not going to say what they are uh, because <laughs> things could things could change between now mm-hmm. uh, and, and uh, on the day. I mean, if somebody, one or two people don't show up, Sometimes I have to to move a group or two around, but yeah, that was once it was sold out. That was the first thing I started playing around with. So, uh, and anyways, my group was going to destroy me, so I know that there's, <laughs> there's easily in the group of seven, four guys, no question, are better than me, and the other two people, uh, maybe I could beat them, maybe I couldn't. Who knows? So you're going to be like, I think this is by design, right? You did this on purpose to so get, get you know pushed out. Because you're no, gonna be busy that day, no, right? Like, no, not at all, not at all. That's, <laughs> I know you're kidding, but, but um, no. When 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 I put the groups together, there's actually a lot of thought process that goes into it. I, one is obviously we try and balance each group, so you get you know, mm-hmm. your your elite players, your second, and, and so on, so that every each group is kind of balanced. We do get requests because guys don't want to play in the same group as their friends. Uh, and which is fine. There's a big group coming from Philadelphia, eight players. Now, unfortunately, I can't separate all of them because we only have five groups, but they did send me kind of a list of how they want to separate themselves out. So I, I took care of that. I also look at um, the, I try and make sure that there's a kind of an equal balance of Canadians and Americans in each group. So that makes it kind of fun too, uh, because people are traveling and, and um, I want to be able to, make sure that when you come there for the most part, most of the guys you probably have never played before, or at least haven't played maybe in a, in a couple of tournaments, whatever, if you're a returning player. So, because uh, that's what, that's what kind of makes it fun, right. Too. So that's part of it as well. Uh, I also think about uh, streaming because we want commentary. People do commentary. So I have to think about which guys can do commentary and I don't want to put all my commentary guys all in one group because that wouldn't work very well. So um, there's a lot of thought that goes into it, but ultimately for the most part is equal balance. That's the, that's the priority. And then everything else is just a matter of moving some things around. There's one question. I mean, I'm going to double back quite a bit. You said the prizes for the King is cash prize for first, second, and third. Is that Mm -hmm. the same amount that's going to be divvied up between SNES and the Genesis guys or. Yeah, that that was. uh, No. So we've always done it that way. We've always had the same amount given out to each. Um, each because there, there's been actually time. I mean, in Vancouver, we had a lot more Super Nintendo guys, and I remember asking oh. Mike. I said, "Yeah, that was like it was like 45 to like 28 or something, or 45 wow. to 30 uh, in favor of Super Nintendo." And I remember asking Mikey how he wanted to do the prizes because uh, I was the money was being collected through me, and he said, "No, just keep it the same." He said, "You know, like have it the same amount for both." Uh, so we've always kind of kept that approach. Uh, and almost every year at, since then, it's been, you know, within, we've been pretty close to the same amount of people. But uh, that's the approach that we're we're taking again this year. Again, I, I Super Nintendo may not sell out, but we'll, we'll definitely get some more players in there. So well, hopefully the people that are listening or watching to this are Super Nintendo folks and they'll sign up and, you know, let's get those numbers up to capacity or at capacity. So let's do our job here. Moving forward, though. What's the plans with the tournament, the King of 94? Uh, where's it taking place next year? Any plans to change it at all? Uh, you know, I have I, I have a hard time thinking that far ahead. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's, there's still a lot of stuff I have to do on the back end in terms of, uh, well, we need to sort out and make sure all the equipment uh, that we have, guys, guys are bringing what we need them to bring because I have some stuff. Uh, Smaz brings a bunch of, of stuff, but that probably only accounts for maybe half uh maybe half of what we actually need uh maybe a little more than half i guess i don't know smuz is he's saved up quite a bit of things but um so there's still a lot on that side to do and i you know getting prizes and those things in place as for next year um it really depends on how this year goes so if everything goes well and people like it and they don't want to go anywhere else and and uh and it works well for for uh, Smalls and I as well. Then then we would just keep doing it. So Toronto is always going to be the location. Oh yes, yeah, yeah, Toronto. Yeah, I. You know what? We 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 had it in a couple other different cities, Vegas and then Vancouver. 
And like I said, it, it is extremely, extremely hard to organize these events uh, when mm-hmm. you don't live there. Extremely hard. And so um, I keep it in Toronto because now I'm familiar with it. And we're definitely familiar with the venue. And so uh, it makes it just that much more easier this year. We know the things that we need to fix. One of them is a higher internet speed. So uh, we need to, um, well, I haven't done that yet, but I need to ask the venue to see if they can uh, increase their um, uh, internet speed, which I'll probably have to pay for. So, mm-hmm. um, um which again, things like donations, uh, you know, from the tournament, that's what things what we use them for to help for those kind of expenses. And so we would just ask them if they can, if they can boost their internet for a month, essentially, so that we can have a good stream. Cause let, we, lots of people like to watch and we don't want it to have a choppy. And so, and we're hoping to have two streams going this year. That was another big thing from last year. A lot of the games that were great games just didn't make it on air. I mean, you can't get everything anyways, but at least the more that you could get uh, people like to watch. Right. So, so we're hoping uh, I know that's, I think Samaz is probably has another computer or, or something. He might be bringing another one, but if not, we're hoping at least somebody can have a second stream set up there so that uh, we can do twice as many games. And that's what we want to do. We want to be able to, to showcase a little bit more. That's awesome. And in, in terms of streaming, not just the NHL 94, you're also going to stream the Ken Griffey and what's the other game that's going to be uh, NBA Jam? I Yeah, I don't know if we're going to be streaming those because um, at in the evening, we also have our 2v2 right. on Saturday night. And we want to get that on the stream if we can, uh, because that is, I to be honest, that is, that is so much fun to play and so much fun to watch. Um, so our hope is that when the, um, you know, the, the king bracket is is complete. There is a bit of a break. I left myself an hour so I could get something to eat. Yeah. <laughs> essentially, essentially. Um, um, so we're hoping to stream some of those games. Now, those all of those tournaments that you just mentioned. So we all have we'll have Super Nintendo two v two, Sega two v two, Ken Griffey Jr. the first one on Super Nintendo and uh, NBA Jam NBA tournament Jam. dish tournament edition on Sega. Yeah. Those are all just going to be straight double elimination tournaments. Um, I wasn't going to have the King or the, or sorry, I wasn't going to have the Griffey or the um, NBA Jam one because I just didn't think I'd have enough time to run it. And I was hoping someone else would pick it up, but nobody did. But I did have people ask me about it and really wanted it to continue. So uh, this is sort of a good compromise because I can just set up the double elimination bracket. And then, you know, once you know where you're, where your spot is on the bracket on the piece of paper, then it just kind of runs itself. So uh, I don't have to worry about um, doing, you know, round robin and then seeding and all that kind of stuff. So Mm -hmm. that's why I kind of did it that way, which uh, we'll see how it goes. And uh, uh, again, it's when I, when we have these things, it's like, I just want to be able to make it fun and enjoyable and memorable for, for everyone that comes along. And when, so when they leave, they, they felt like they got their money's worth and uh, they enjoyed the time. And I will say that the group of guys that come to this are the best group of people that you'll ever get to meet. They are fun. They are talkative. They want to help you. Uh, if you're newer, they want to help you with um, uh, your skills in the game and those kinds of things. They just like to just generally be around and be a part of it. So that's what I enjoy the most is just hanging out with the, hanging the guys and playing my favorite video game. It's too bad this only happens once a year. We have maybe expanded, so it happens multiple <laughs> times. But I know it's so much work and effort, and well, you know, I'm, I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 the, the, the nostalgia of having it once a year I think is perfect Yeah. Uh, because then it becomes, well, I don't want to miss it because it only comes once a year. And, and I kind of put it in perspective. It's like, you know, uh, how many more of these uh, do we get to have? Um, I don't know, 30, 40? Maybe less, maybe more. It really depends, uh, you know, how long we're we're around for it. So, so because of that, it's like I I always want to keep it going. As long as people want to keep showing up and playing, then uh, Smuzz and I will always want to to keep putting it on for you guys. So, now as for having tournaments, I mean, there are some other tournaments the rest of the year um, that people put on. There are some that kind of pop in and pop out, and, and other ones that have been 
pretty consistent. So, but I kind of agree with you that it would be nice if more cities, more people in those cities, put some on it. Because I actually I get a lot of I get a lot of, um, especially on Twitter, I get a lot of messages saying, "Hey, when are you coming to my, to my city?" And then it's like, <laughs> and then I kind of like. I was like, okay. And then I usually respond with, okay, tell me what that would look like. Where would it be? What, you know, and they're just like, you know, like I get one, you know, was, what was it? One person was from Pittsburgh. Another one was Columbus. And then uh, I got one from Detroit and it's all the same. And I just say, okay, you help me out and tell me, you know, what that would look like. And I said, maybe I can't run it, but maybe I can help you yeah. put something together. And then I usually don't hear back from them. So it's like, <laughs> So. It's like a lot, a lot of work. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's exactly. It's like, hey, you know, I don't want to go to Toronto, but will you come to me? I was like, this isn't a business, <laughs> right? It's not your full time job. Like, we don't, we don't make, we don't make money off of this. Like, all the money that gets put into it, uh, Smalls and I, we just put right back into the turkey. Like, because we, it's fun. Like, you know, I want to spend the money on, on prizes and and whatever else or anything to make it to make it better. Last year, I rented some some broadcast televisions, which I think were good, but they don't come with speakers. Those, um, you know, those professional um, Sony, I, I forget what I'm, the word I'm thinking of. That's not Trinitron, but anyways, they were, they were professional grade. They were really nice to play on. No sound though. So, and it was a real kind of a real uh, deal to sort out trying to get it from them there and then get it back to these, this company, so I, I don't think I'm going to do that again. It just wasn't worth worth the the time for it. So, so we're hoping that you know guys can just cumulatively collect uh, some more CRTs to bring. So, <laughs> if you have one laying around and it works, maybe you want to get in touch with. Yeah, them. I mean, well, I, I mean, I've got two, and I think Smaz says six, so that's eight, and then <laughs> at least one other guy has two, so that's ten. Uh, and then after that, um, I can't remember because some guys will, will have them, but they're only there for one day. Right. So they take it home at the end of the day. So if they're yeah. only there for a second, they're not going to, they're not going to come back on Sunday and vice versa. <coughs> Excuse me. Pardon me. So, so there's that part of it too. So, but, um, anyways, so that's why of- I don't want to have it in different cities. No, I, I be, totally get it. I'd be okay with like having an, a, just a separate tournament in another city but uh this particular one uh not really so well selfishly i'm happy it's in toronto because it's relatively local to me i'm just a 40 minute drive so th- well that's and that's the that's the exact reason why we have it there like um because it's so centralized to um i would say like every sort of hockey area in that northeast united states and then you have uh you have ontario you know the gta itself is massive and even people, we got guys coming from, you know, Montreal and Quebec and that kind of thing. So, so it's in Michigan, you know, like it's just that area itself. People can get there usually within, you know, a few hours of driving or an, an hour or two of flying. So, I mean, guys like myself, I have to fly three and a half hours, four hours, yeah. whatever it is to get there. But, but I'm happy to do that because I know that most of the players that we can get are, uh, you know, are willing to go to Toronto. Just easy to get in and out of. So if, and if anybody wants, if somebody wants to reach out and help, like what's the process? How could they help? What could, what could they provide for assistance and who do they reach out to? Uh, well, they have to go through our legal team first. We do a rigorous <laughs> interview process. <laughs> <laughs> we, no, we, <laughs> we uh, volunteering um, during the registration process. There is a question. Uh, I don't know if actually how many people filled it out. I didn't make it mandatory, but uh, a few people must have, though. Um, we ask if people can help for the day and what they want to do. So if they want to be a com, you know, they want to do commentary on the stream, great. I need some of those people. We have some in the community. So, but if new people want to do it, that's okay too. Um, and I need people to like manage the equipment, uh, people to help log scores, um, part of the round robber group. So, and then, uh, you know, probably the biggest one is the setup. I mean, there's the more bodies that we have to um, get everything set up in the morning because we only have like two hours to do it. It can be done. We did it last year, uh, but we can't do it without, you know, at least five or six guys helping us, right? So so that is probably the biggest thing. So if you're registering, 
please offer to volunteer to help us out there. Many hands make for light work. So if they want to help, because lugging those CRTs up to the second floor is not going to be an easy task. What time do you recommend people show up if they want to do that? Because that's going to be, I guess, the easiest, but probably the most worthwhile task for somebody to do. So we'll, we'll coordinate it um, um, and we'll, we'll figure out when they need to be there. Cause it also rely, you have to, you know, get, make sure that the venue, uh, what time we can get into the venue, I believe, nine o'clock was the earliest we could get into it last year i'm going to try and see if we can push to it earlier but it's it's not up to me it's up to them so um um so that so once once we figure out the time then i can just tell people hey please be here at this time and bring whatever you're bringing or if you're not bringing if you're just coming to help that's when then what's when we need you there so yeah well I think we've covered just about everything. Any last words, anything else before we uh, sign off? Because I just want to make sure people that are come, tuning in, listening in, especially for the first time that's not aware of the King of 94, I just want to make sure that they have all the details. By the way, kingof94.ca is the website. But any final words you want to just say before we uh, wrap this one up? I would just say that I've been doing this for, uh, like I said, for almost 10 years, and every single one of them has been awesome. Uh, it, they're so much fun. They're like I said, the guys that are there are fun to be around. I find when the playoffs come around, the games, once you get into your, your sort of bracket of same skill level, the games become a lot more close, you know, a lot of overtime games, those kinds of things, one goal games. And that's what really makes it a lot of fun. And so I would say, like, if you've never come before, you don't have to feel like intimidated or anything like that. It's really just a fun group. I, you know, and I'm proud to say that in the in the nine years of doing this, I cannot think of one single incident where somebody got out of hand, like threw a controller and smashed it or started getting really mad or whatever. Like that just doesn't happen at these things. And I hope that that continues again this time. But it has just never happened. And, you know, maybe we're just, you know, we're not teenagers anymore. We yeah. got past that sort of that era. Right. So that's what I really like about it. Um Everybody's just cool to be around. It's a fun event. And that's what I tell people. Don't come to, to play to try to hope you win money. Just come for a weekend and have fun and see how you do. Well, let's be honest. We're not sitting next to our brother or sister or our best friend on the couch, what we were do, doing in the 90s and punching them whenever they score a goal. It's a little bit different now. <laughs> <laughs> These people we may know like through the internet, but still, you know, you can't just go punch them in the arm for scoring a goal on you. <laughs> you yeah. Like a charge for assault. <laughs> yeah. I remember those days. <laughs> I, yeah. I was better than my brothers and they were both bigger and older than me. So <laughs> I, uh, I had to keep my distance when I was playing them. So you, you learned I set them I set them both into retirement, which I, I'll, I'll say I'm <laughs> proud that I did that. He's like, sending anybody else into retirement in this tournament. I want to see if you have the, the same. Me, oh, no, 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 not in this tournament. I don't send anyone to retirement. <laughs> that, that will that will not happen. We haven't played me. You haven't seen my skill level. I'm pretty bad. But <laughs> either way, uh, Daryl, I want to thank you for coming on once again. This is the second go round. You're actually the first person I've uh, talked to for a second time on the show. So. I want to thank, thank you for you. taking the time and coming on. So this has been awesome. And yeah, with that, just make sure that you listen in. Move forward, keep your stick on the ice and your controllers plugged in. 